Hello and welcome to another video. My name's David and this time we're going to have a look at replacing the background of an image and just to make life a little bit more interesting, the image I've selected, yes there is a fair bit of flyaway hair. Right, let's make a start. We're going to head over to the layers panel. We're going to duplicate the background layer using command J, control J. Next, to make life a little bit easier with the hair, we're going to head down to an adjustment layer and we're going to select levels. Now by brightening it up, if I come to the gamma slider, moving it to the left hand side, you introduce more of the lighter pixels. And when you brighten it up, you can see more of the hair. I'm going to take it into this sort of area here will do nicely. We now need to merge our levels adjustment layer down with this background layer and we can do that by coming up to the top of the levels dialog box and clicking on merge. You can now see the thumbnail. This one's much brighter and there it is the original underneath. Over to the toolbox in with the marquee tool you will find at the very bottom a freehand selection tool. You can see it's on freehand and the mode is set to new. Coming down to the bottom just off the image and just off the subject or model here just come down we're going to make a selection around the outside so just keeping it like this round we come trimming off a few hairs as we go and round the top over the top of the image well you can see where I am down around the other side again keeping roughly that same margin doesn't really matter though just making a rough selection around until we come down the other side. Once again, just taking it off the image, release it and across it will shoot, it will join up for us. Now, if you want to remove any areas from the selection, for example, this part here, and perhaps even that part there, all you need to do is press and hold down Alt or Option. Notice the way you get that little minus symbol. We can now click down, you can go around like this, and if I come up to this one, this is probably more important. Round we go in there, just deselecting that. And there it is. Next, let's head up to Refine. Now, when Refine opens, we get this sort of quick mask looking uh, selection going around it. This is Preview Overlay. Matte Edge ticked. All of this is set to the defaults. That's the size of the brush I've got and come in on the outside. I want to span across between the two, perhaps can make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to use the right hand square bracket to do that. And I've dropped down to 45 pixels. Work that one out. <laughs> OK, off the edge, I'm going to click down I'm going to go off the edge there. Now coming up onto the image, just overlapping it slightly as we can see around this part here, releasing it. Let's see how it's doing done a really good job clicking down again bringing it in just coming over that part making sure I go over our first part, part of our selection I tend to do little bits at a time using command one control one let's zoom in so we can see exactly how we're doing moving it across you press the space bar brings up the hand tool so we can move our way around making sure I go over the image the hair and let's come up to this part here releasing it that has done a really good job right one of the important things with this is make sure you don't leave any gaps and by a gap what i mean is this sort of thing here i've deliberately left that little gap if you do notice the way that gap becomes bigger clicking down i'm going to go over that whole thing again and just coming around so that's one thing to make sure of is you don't leave any gaps that looks pretty good and the other thing is Gaps, I suppose, is making sure you select all of the background through the hair. That's also very important. Let's take it to that point right up over here and just into there. We'll do back over, filling that in. Right, dropping the size of the brush down, left hand square bracket. We need to do that to get into this area here. So let's go over. Notice the way I had half of the brush over the image. Just making sure I did that. Let's go over it again because it didn't do a very good job. Still not doing a very good job. Don't you love it when this happens? Yes, I hear you say it happens all the time. And right, I'll come back to that. Moving on quickly. This side here, 
right hand square bracket let's make it larger let's go over the hand down round to her wrist over the hair as well as i've said just make sure you don't get any gaps with it over the wristbands like that the hair releasing it that's done a good job perhaps a little bit over that end tab there tongue whatever it happens to be called round we go that's done a good job there and clicking down on the outside bringing it in over the hair over the finger making sure we fill all of that in notice the way that fingernail has just come out of the selection so let's go over that again that's better right going over the area of the leg releasing it that looks pretty good right i'm just going to go over that fingernail again right that'll do command zero control zero let's go to fit on screen let's drop the size of the brush right down left hand square bracket determined to get this bit at the top here over like that releasing it and why couldn't it have done that the first time <laughs> okay if you want to check out how the mask is looking a really good way is to change it from overlay down to black and white and you can see there we've got some thin edges around here here there's that fingernail which was proving that problematic you can try making it a little bit of a tighter selection taking the size of the brush up bringing it in you can go over it releasing it like this and it's made it worse but i'm not going to worry about it let's change it back to overlay the reason i'm not going to worry about it is because output no i never use selection i always use new layer with mask so i've selected it we're going to click apply we have got a new layer with a mask right clicking on this layer we don't need it anymore i'm going to press delete on the keyboard Let's switch off the background layer and you can see there's our problem areas. I'm going to click on the mask so this is now live. Right, over to the toolbox, press B on the keyboard will give you the brush tool. Coming over to the color panel, make sure you've got the default colors, any other color. Press D on the keyboard to restore those default colors. Brushes, I'm using the basic brush panel and I've got a hard edge brush selected. Command 1, Control 1 will take us into 100%. Notice this area here as we were zooming in. I'm going to press X on the keyboard for white. I'm just going to come over that area. Let's come over the nails, paint the nail in. Just moving my way around. Taking the size of the brush up using the right hand square bracket. And just coming over this denim. Notice as you move it around, if I press the space bar, the checkerboard that gives you a little bit of an indication where it's thin as we can see on this side here as I move that around so always a good idea just give it a little bit of movement just fill in it and you can see the way it darkens down talking of darkened down you can see that line on the outside that means we're going over the edge doesn't matter that gives you a little bit of a guide press x that has now put black as the foreground color that's going to remove the mask don't forget this is a hard edge brush so it is giving quite a nice tight selection. And we go there. That looks good. Quickly zoom in over to this area. Pressing X on the keyboard. And I'm just going to very, very quickly go over this area of denim. Here and here. Press X on the keyboard. Black is the foreground color. We can remove that. Taking it right up to that black edge. That can give you that guideline there. So you know you've got everything in. And if I press X again for white. I'm just going to come over that area. Command zero, control zero. There we are. Right, so let's switch on the background layer. Let's turn this off. You can see just how much brighter it is. What we now need to do is we need to go back to our original. And we can do that once again using the mask. Make sure the mask is live. Now press hold down, command or control. Click on the mask. We have ourselves a selection. Switch this layer off folded up out of the way as well clicking on our background layer that selection is now on the background and we can now use command j Control j which will copy the selection 
looking larger because of course there is no background attached to this command d control d will deselect right let's click on this layer i'm going to press delete we don't need it anymore switching off there it is that's looking better now if you think the hair looks just a little bit woolly don't uh, worry about that what i'm now going to do is click on the background layer I did a search using the stock tab. I went to Pixabay, I put in wall background, but I came up with this one and I thought this would really suit the image. So what I've done, of course you can click on it, you can drag it out, but what I've done is I've downloaded it because that way I can actually put a link below the video so you too can download it. And I also like using file and coming down to place. So I put it on my desktop, there it is there. It's actually called Bokeh and if I click open, that's going to bring up the place tool. Let's click in the top corner, dragging it out. Notice the way that woolly hair has now disappeared, bringing it to the edge. Coming down, talking of edge, bringing that down as well. Looking a lot better, and I think this background really does suit the image. I want to see a little bit more of the punch metal around this side, so let's come to the grab handle. I'm going to pull that out into this area. Now we don't need this much hanging over the edge. So bring your cursor inside, right click, and we're gonna go down to rasterize and trim. That has trimmed it off. Command zero, control zero, will put it at the center screen with the image. Talking of the center screen, let's click on our model and I'm gonna move her off to the side here. That looks pretty good, pressing H on the keyboard. There it is, that's replacing the background. Oh, I'll tell you what, let's zoom in. Command 1, Control 1, let's go into 100%. Look at that, we have got all of those flyaway hairs. That looks really good. A little bit around this edge here. If something like this happens, you can always put in a layer mask. Click on the layer mask, make sure it's live. Press B on the keyboard, we'll give you the brush tool. Still got the default colors. If I just bring this over, I need to press X on the keyboard. That's going to give me black. And I can just blend that in like this. Just taking the edge off that. Just going over it a little bit more. And there it is. That'll do nicely. You can see it on the mask. Command 0, Control 0 to go to fit on screen. Let's fold this up out of the way. And I think that background there, yes, that really does look good with the image. Of course, you can experiment. Why not try darker color? This way we can just see the image underneath so you can have it in black and white. I like that. It gives almost like a reflection look to it. Go on, give it a try. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Give it the thumbs up if you have. Don't forget to subscribe, plenty more videos to come. And if you click that little bell icon, you receive a notification every time a new video is posted. But until the next time, it is happy imaging and take care.